Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. No more waiting to exhale. Tom Brady beats the NFL. Now, what for Roger Goodell in this political game of thrones? We cannot sustain our very high burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. After two and a half years in jail, case dismissed against the Irish nanny. But will this apparent rush to judgment trail Middlesex DA Marion Ryan? The Boston City Councilors grabbing the green as they angle for a hefty pay raise. Are they worth it? We will discuss. Congressman Mike Capuano up to his political eyeballs in Green Line cost overruns, casino traffic pattern that threats his district, and of course, a Labor Day check-in on the state of the presidential race. From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Harding. Happy Labor Day weekend to you. Congressman Mike Capuano is our guest. He's alongside this morning, this holiday weekend. The Democrat represents much of Boston, Cambridge, and Somerville. It's great to see you, sir, just before we get into the fall season. Are you ready to get away from the summer heat? Um, sure. I and, hate the summer heat. And, and jump into the fall. <laughs> I have in my hands the 40-page decision. The decision by Judge Richard Berman that, that completely vacates the four-game suspension of Tom Brady. Well, it, no Patriot fan ever tires of, of this decision to nullify the suspension. Since you're from here and whatever, will, will this affect the narrative of the NFL season, do you think? Uh, I don't know. All I know is I'm really looking forward to the first game. I want to see Roger Goodell walk out to that field and award the trophy and put the banner up and see what kind of a reaction he gets from oh, the <laughs> all fine New England fans. Well, it is the kickoff, and he, he, he will be there. I would not suspect that he would not be there. It's, what about the matters of, of taking something as, as minuscule of, as the air pressure in a football into a federal court? It's, you know, wasting the federal court's time for air pressure. It's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. I mean, I mean, if they had actually done something relatively small, it probably would have just been done and over with. But instead, they kind of overreached, and, and honestly, I don't know all the details. I haven't taken the time to read the opinion right. yet. But when I heard that the commissioner was appointing himself to hear the appeal from yeah, his decision, yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah, I mean, light. that's ding, not ding, even ding, close ding. to right. fair. Little bells go off. Attorney General of Massachusetts, Maura Healey, has given the go-ahead for two 2016 ballot questions, 2016, not this year, but 2016 ballot questions that would legalize marijuana in the Bay State. Four states and the District of Columbia, that's where you work, have legalized pot for recreational use. Should Massachusetts join them? Uh, I don't know. I will not presume to tell anybody what they should do. I have not read those questions yet, but I generally support the concept of decriminalizing marijuana. So the same reason you just said about the uh, about yeah. the case. I don't think it's a great way to use our court cases in a, in the real world. So, it, but but essentially, this is something that at least should be put in front of the vote. Should the voters decide an issue sure like should. that? Sure, they should. And so again, they want, they should have. That would that would be 2016. Uh, what about what about the opioid problem? It seems to it, it's certainly in the news. It's certainly high profile. We hear the stories regularly of, yep. uh, and it seems to cut across all ethnic lines. It they, does. You know, it does not hit one particular group. It hits everyone. Yep. Um, it's just something I know that uh, it, it's really something that should be done at a local level. The federal government is involved in it a little bit, but it, let's be honest, it's something that has to be done at the street level. That's the local communities and sometimes the state. Uh, I know that most of the mayors that I know are working hard on the issue. Uh, the governor is engaged, the attorney general is engaged. So I actually think you, know, you can't stop those kinds mm -hmm. of things, but you mm -hmm. can help them. And I, and I actually think that our government is, is doing the best it can in an almost impossible situation. Now, it truly is almost impossible. We learned just last week that the long Long-awaited Green Line extension is now a billion over its cost estimates. Once again, the state and the T allowing outsiders to manage costs. Just, just when you hear that sentence, allowing, <laughs> allowing the T is allowing outsiders to manage costs. Does that reek of the big dig at all? Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's too, it's too early to tell at the moment. But we were asking people to basically allow themselves to get paid more by saying something costs more. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is a new system that was tried that a lot of people touted as a great way to save money. It's more efficient. Well, it is more efficient as long as you don't mind spending a lot more money. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so I, I think that the state's going to get their hands around it. I think that that number will not be a, the number in the final analysis. It will cost a little bit more than the original estimate because it's that's what state projects do. Right, right, right. Um, it won't be a billion dollars, and I do think that the state will uh, will find different ways. Number one, to cut the cost, and number two, is to fit the project in under reduced 
expenses. Well, well for you, there, there's a vested interest. I mean, the, the, the transportation system going through Somerville and Medford. So what should happen? It, the, the process, the progress needs to be made. I mean, and that that, that line will be built. I mean, it, it, does it have to be built and finished by tomorrow? No, of yeah. course not. They need to stretch it a little longer. If they need to do some things like tone down some of the quality of, of the of the stations themselves for a while, uh, those are things we're happy to work with them on. Um, but to, to walk away from the project is unacceptable. And by the way, it's a, a violated court agreement. Let's talk about casinos. Boston's Mayor Marty Walsh is not backing down in his quest to be a host city with the Everett Casino. He has a lawsuit against the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, and he's had some judicial criticism for that. What's your take on the on the Walsh position, the casinos? Um, I'm a former mayor, and I understand fully well where Marty or any other mayor would fight as hard as they can for what they think is the best interest of their cities. He should do that, and I think he will. He'll go as far as he can go, and he'll, if he wins, great. If he doesn't, that's mm -hmm, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think it's important, just recently, Marty also finally has said that, um, that Rutherford Ave and Sullivan Square has to be done uh, uh, which is the first time that he has, I mean, he, I, I have spoken to him. He has always known that even before the casino issue. But during the casino fight, he's decided to kind of put that off to the side and not talk about it up until now. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, it was a good sign to me that um, regardless of whether he wins or loses his lawsuit and whether Boston should be a host community, that Solomon Square and Rutherford Ave need to be fixed. Well, and that's where I wanted to go next. The Secretary of Transportation is fine with the wind plan for Sullivan Square. It, 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 I don't have to tell you. It's a, it's a ridiculously congested <laughs> traffic already. Yeah, and you can imagine if you put the the, the weight of a casino traffic in there. Are you at all disappointed with that decision? Not at all. I, I actually, I, I think, well, the, the wind plan is not a real plan. The wind plan is within, here's, here's the money that I said I would give, and this is what I would do with that money. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It mm -hmm. doesn't fix the problem. And the truth is, I don't think you can go to any developer and say, you are solely responsible for fixing this problem. As you said, mm -hmm. the problem existed before them. It will exist after them. Um, they do exacerbate the problem, and they should be chipping in, and they are. Uh, so I hope that this will actually put this project at the top of the Priority list. I, I want to I want to talk about Iran. You head back to work next week, right? Yep. All right. So you're, since you're heading back to work, uh, the the Iran nuclear deal will be before Congress, and the vote should be somewhere in the middle of September. So we're talking no, no, within it's a week. No, it's going to be this week. It'll be this week. I, I All right, it's right there. It's you've you've said sure. you would you will support it. You're still in the support column. Uh, I'm still in the support column. Uh, again, not 150 percent yet. Uh, okay. And then so so closer. explain why why not 150 percent? The only reason is because it, it's the most volatile region in the world. Anything could happen at a moment's notice. I mean, Iran could do something crazy. Israel. Could could take military action. Russia could do something crazy um, this, that may or may not, Im any of those things could impact what we're doing over there. I don't expect that to happen, but I, I think to pretend that the Middle East is, is, is downtown Boston and everybody right. loves each other right. is, is ridiculous. It's, a, it's, a, it's the most volatile region in the entire world. So, so if you lived in Tel Aviv, you might not vote for it, right? Um, I, I actually would. I, 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 the way I look at it is I'm, you don't get to deal all the cards. You get to play the cards you dealt, and in this case, the cards we get dealt on an international basis, by the way, uh, is this is the deal. Is, is The question is, does this deal make us have a better chance at being at remaining at peace, have a mm -hmm. better chance of keeping the Middle East mm -hmm. nuclear free? Uh, at the moment, I think it does. It's no guarantee, um, and I don't think the Tel Aviv or, or anybody in that region all of a sudden can breathe a big sigh of relief. That's not what this is. This is okay. It doesn't make it worse. The Pope is coming to the United States later this month, and he'll address Congress. What's your reaction to his message to American women who have had abortions, allowing them to be absolved for uh, in this year? Wonderful. A uh, long, long overdue. I, I will tell you that I am a Catholic myself, uh, and this is the best Pope in my lifetime, in my estimation. And who's, and who's going with you to the speech, by the way? Uh, that hasn't been decided. That hasn't been decided uh, yet? Not yet. It's uh, still in flux. You're in flux? <laughs> you have a very special date privilege to this, uh, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds go. like there are pressures <laughs> mounting on that. There, there's some. Uh, we're ready for the OTR pop quiz. Oh, for I was hoping without Janet we'd have to well, do no, no. <laughs> <laughs> With Janet, it's twice as hard. I know. It's Labor Day weekend, so let's have some fun. And today's OTR political pop quiz political quotes. Question one. This is a quote. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. No. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Who, did, who said who it? Who said that? I, I actually even know where it was. Donald, it's part of the Donald Trump show. I'm surprised you asked me Donald any Trump questions. <laughs> I'm surprised you asked me any questions that the answer wasn't Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Donald Trump to Univision's Jorge Ramos. Question two What now 2016 presidential candidate told Congress this? Was it because of a protest or was it because of a guy goes out for a walk one night and decided to kill some Americans? What difference? At this point, what difference does it make? Um, I don't really it know. It is a now I, I presidential presume, candidate. I presume it is Hillary Clinton. Relative uh, you to presume correctly in 2013. We continue on the record with Congressman Capuano. Stay with us.